All right, guys. Our next guest is coming off a dominant finish over the surgeon Kelvin Gaslam at UFC on Fox 25 in his hometown of Long Island, New York. He is currently ranked number five in the UFC's middleweight rankings and also the former UFC middleweight champion. He's, of course, Chris Weidman. Chris, welcome back to Submission Radio. How are you today? It's always a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, the pleasure is all ours, Chris. And you were supposed to be on last week, but there were some problems around a recent surgery that you had. We believe it was your thumb. So tell us, how are you recovering, and what exactly was the surgery? Who told you about that? That's that's confidential. We have me. spies. <laughs> we, we, we watch you when you sleep, Chris. We know these things. <laughs> you guys are on my house cameras? Yeah, that that's right. <laughs> I knew it. That's the only way you would know. Uh so I had, I guess in, in the fight, in, on one of my left hooks, I'm pretty sure in the first or second um, when he was coming after me, I threw a left hook and my thumb, uh, I guess, dislocated and it had torn a ligament and a, uh, a little piece of bone. Wow. And um, so after the fight, I got my, my hands checked out. I thought I was going to be okay. Um, I didn't think I was going to need a surgery. Um, I just hope I was hoping just something was broken, but um, I ended up needing to do a surgery where it's a, it's going to be all right. Recovery. It's like six week recovery. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but they gave me a crazy ass score. I got a, I got a pin in my hand right now. Um, had a bunch of stitches. So um, pretty painful surgery, but it's a quick recovery. So, wow. Is it, is it a big scar? The kind of scar that you're going to be showing off? You know, I might have to, I think I might, Make it like some barbed wire, or <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a tattoo around it. Yeah, there's something cool because I don't know, it's pretty crazy right well, now. How, how's it? How's it feeling, by the way? I, I mean, you, you literally, I think you're a week removed from surgery. How, how's it feeling now? Uh, I'm like two weeks. Uh, what am I? Two and a half. I think I'm like almost three weeks actually removed from surgery. I had surgery pretty much right away. Oh wow. Um, yeah, but it was uh, it was one of those things where it was. It was really painful, you know, um, and I had a, you know, it's a monster scar. And I think anything on the hand just is, uh, just, I guess, sucks with all the nerve endings in there. But, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's doing all right. It's feeling good. Well, on the opposite side, uh, side of things, we want to congratulate you because we saw the other, the other week you celebrated your nine-year anniversary with your lovely wife. So we've got to find out, what did you guys do to celebrate the special occasion? Um, we actually, we went to this place, um, on Long Island, this place called Maroni's. It's a really good restaurant. It's like a bunch of tasting, it's like a tasting menu type place, Italian style, mm-hmm. uh, where they just keep bringing out different types of, uh, like taste of food, like tapas and mm. stuff. So it was, uh, it was really good. You know, hung out the wifey. I'm a, I'm a big tapas guy. So much respect. What is the Weidman secret? I know this is kind of a, a broad open question, but if you can, if you, if you can give it to us, what is the Weidman secret to keeping such a happy and successful marriage for so long? Nine years. That's, that's a long time. Just give up. <laughs> <laughs> give you up. Have to, you have to recognize, you got, you got to recognize the real. And my wife, she doesn't, she doesn't, you know, I can't, I can't win an argument. So when there's uh, I just, you just, sometimes you just got to keep your mouth shut and just, Take the L. You gotta just get used to taking losses. And uh, I like it. I'm, uh, I, she, she runs, she runs me. <laughs> I love it. There's and people I'm okay out with, with it. I'm okay there's, with pe- it. <laughs> there's people out with notepads right now writing down yeah. the secret. I feel like we're changing a lot of relationships right now. But I mean, in general, yeah. <laughs> we, we, ima- we imagine these last few weeks, apart from the annoying surgery, must be. You know, a great time for you because we know you had a lot of pressure on you going into this Calvin Gaslam fight. So tell us, how are you feeling now in general in life? Is it a bit more stress-free and enjoyable now that you're back in the win column? Um, you know, I, uh, I feel good. Um, I feel good. Um, and, yeah, I guess a little less stress. Um, but I'm I'm very motivated to continue, you know. So I'm, I'm back in the gym. I'm doing everything I can with my legs, you know, getting my legs looking good, getting those, trying to get those calf muscles looking right, you know? <laughs> and um, just doing everything I can, you know, cosmetically to look as good as I can, and that's it. Oh, man. I, 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 I'm picturing a lot of shorts this summer, Chris. But I'm not, 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 in all seriousness, they're not only beating Gaslam, yeah. but finishing. Yeah, I, I, got, I got huge calves. Huge calves. Huge calves? <laughs> I love it. How, how, how much did that do for you mentally in terms of, I guess, believing in yourself again and helping you to sort of see yourself and visualize yourself as champion again, that win? 
Uh, it felt awesome. Um, you know, I knew what I could do. My coach did, and um, all people saw from the outside looking in was, uh, you know, you know, if the casual MMA fan is a guy who has three losses in there, they were thinking I was just on my way out, and it was all motivating stuff for me. So to be able, be able to have the opportunity to prove people wrong um, against a tough guy like Kelvin um, was a great opportunity. I was excited for. I was so I was really motivated for the fight, and uh, to go out there and do um, what I did was uh, was great. Mm. And, I mean, there's only five guys ahead of you in the rankings. You've got Jacare, Rockhold, Romero, Whitaker, and Bisping. What do you think kind of makes sense as the next fight for yourself? You know, I don't know. Uh, we we shall see. The division is in a weird spot. Mm. Uh, you know, I got to this sport to become champion. So whatever whatever it takes to, to get the belt, that's where the money's at. You know, you, like the real money that uh, you need to – that you're able to use, you know, for the rest of your life, you know, to uh, make this all worth it. I feel like you got to get that belt. And um, so that's the goal. Whatever way I could get the belt, uh, whether it's rematches with Yo Romero or Luke Rockhold, um, you know, whoever whoever in the top five, you know, people want to see me fight, uh, I'm down for. Obviously, the quicker way I can get the belt, that's what I want to do. Mm. Any particular fights that you're sort of eyeing and that are on your radar? You mentioned Luke Rockhold is facing David Branch in September in Pittsburgh. If he wins, could you see it setting up the rematch that was originally supposed to happen at UFC 199? Yeah, who knows? Um, who knows what's going to happen? I think Branch beats him. I mean, I think Luke, he got put to sleep by, by Pillow Hands Bisbing. And I think his chin might be gone. So I have a feeling he gets put to sleep against uh, Branch. Um, but we shall see. I don't know. Don't know what the future entails. I'm not I'm not really anticipating anything. I can't control these things. Mm. I don't know who, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I just got to take care of myself and, um, Whatever gets put on my plate, um, we'll go forward with that. Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, speaking of Bisping, you and him have traded words and have a rivalry for years, and yet your paths still haven't crossed yet. And with him not being too far away from what people believe is a possible retirement, is he a guy that you want to kind of have a chance to fight at some point? And would you di be disappointed if you didn't get a chance to fight him before he finished up his career? Uh, no, I don't, I don't care. Um I want the biggest challenges, and honestly, I don't think he's the biggest challenge. Um, definitely not. Whether he's champ or not, that's not. He's not the individual that I like get excited to fight because he's champion. Um, I, I get excited. I would get excited to fight him if he had the belt. Other than that, which I don't see him having the belt very long, I don't. I don't see any reason to fight him. Wow. I, I'm curious because he actually admitted on his podcast that your tweet, you guys obviously had a bit of back and forth, you know, he he, he brought up your dad, you brought up his eye, and he admitted on his podcast that, uh, that those tweets about his eye, they really hit a nerve and he doubled down on, on you know, he claims that he's going to make you pay when he sees you next time for feeling like you can tweet whatever you want. He, uh, he, you know, he brought up the fact that you're a religious guy. Did you realize that he took those tweets so seriously? Man, this guy does everything. He bashes everybody else. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't expect anybody else to get sensitive when he's bashing them. And uh, like he rips up the Cuba f uh, flag right in front of Yo Romero's face while Yo Romero's in the middle of a championship fight. I mean, he, you can't get more disrespectful. And a guy who crossed the line more. So if I was gonna, you know, mess with somebody, it's pr Michael Bisbing. It's I think you could put bring everything to the table. I don't think. Uh, you know, I don't think you really have to think too much before you speak with him. Um, after everything he, he said, is, he's pretty much, uh, you know, um, he pretty much go free range on him. You know, <laughs> so I don't, I, I can't, I can't believe he's so sensitive when somebody says something to him. He can't take it. It's crazy. And it must be interesting because obviously you, you do a lot of promotional work with the UFC in between fights. You, you're a guest at a lot of fight nights. Do you expect it to be a little bit weird between you two when you guys run into each other next time? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it will be. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I really don't. I, I really can't get mad at anything Bisping says, and I can't take him seriously. Uh, I mean, listen, if the guy comes in my face and he's screaming, um, we're probably going to end up fighting, but... I don't think if he really wants to do that type of thing, he's looking for a fight. I mean, if he comes into my face and creates a problem, there's going to be a problem, but I'm not looking for a problem with the guy. I don't really care. You just you just chilling, working on your calves. You mentioned uh, obviously the division being in a funny place, Chris. What what do you what do you think about the current title picture? Obviously in the middleweight division, with there being obviously an interim champ in, in Whitaker, but then the UFC deciding to put GSP back in, in, in against Bisping. It's a funny situation. 
it's a crazy thing. I feel like it's going to hold this whole thing is probably going to hold up the division for a long time. Um, if it works out that way, you know, the way it looks like right now and the possibilities of how long it could take before the opportunity for other guys to fight for the belt, it looks a little crazy right now. So hopefully things change a little bit and hopefully they will. Um, Cause I know like Whitaker's injured pretty long. I know he has a bad knee surgery, so I don't know when he's going to be back. And, um, and then he got GSP and Bisping. I mean, GSP has been for four years. Uh, he's been out for a while, so who knows until when he would be ready if he was to win to fight again. Mm. And then you have uh, Bisping, who also really hasn't fought too much since he's had the belt, you know. So I don't know when, or in the next, when even they would fight Whitaker, and then and then the winner of that when you can actually fight them, barring injury or not, you know. So it's a uh, it's a weird uh, weight class right now. Um, so I, I really don't know. It's these old things again out of my control, so I just got to sit back and uh, worry about myself and see what happens. Mm. And and Dana White and GSP have said that they they want, that he that he'll defend the title if he beats Bisping. But a lot of us have a hard time believing that if he beats Bisping, GSP won't go to another huge fight. Do you believe that if he does beat Bisping, we'll see him defend the title one or two times? I don't know. We'll get. I guess. I mean, if he's saying he has to, um, maybe he will. So um, we shall see. And I'm just wondering, you mentioned the long sort of time frame. Does that make you think about your own career tra- trajectory? I know there's some things you can't control, but obviously, uh, you know, w- when you get your next fight and if you go in there, you get a big win, a big splash, a lot of the times, given your rankings, that would put you up in a title shot. But like you mentioned, the division may take almost a year to shake out. Do you kind of sort of think about your own career trajectory and, and it almost makes you think about, well, what is the point of going out there and getting a massive win if, if you know, the division's going to be shaking itself out for such a long time? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there has to be a clear picture. Like I said, my goal is to be a champ, and uh, there's no no way of me getting to have the belt for, you know, two years or whatever or more just based on uh, other people taking their time uh, with taking fights. It's, uh, it's a weird place to be. You know, it's not interesting. I mean, so I, I mean, if one eight, if uh, one eight five, if it's not, if the, things don't change, uh, I want to maybe think about, you know, possibly going to two hundred five. So we'll see. And that's an interesting sentiment because a lot of people have wanted to see you go up to two hundred five for a really long time because there's so many fresh, fun matchups. I mean, when you when you look at two hundred five, what what makes it an interesting, uh, I suppose, move for yourself? Is it the fact that at the moment the division looks like it's pretty quiet and it's a great time to sort of go up there and, and try your hand at light heavyweight? Well, I think it's a little bit of a thinner division. Um, and right now the title picture, there's no like clear, I don't feel like there's like clear contenders, you know, I don't know like, how many guys are up in the top five that um, really are shooting to fight for the title soon. So um, if there's a clear picture to go to 205, I mean, clear picture to the title at 205, you know, then I'll, I would consider that, you know. But again, I, I'm not really not putting too much thought into any of this. You know, obviously I got to focus on getting my hand better and uh, and staying healthy. And that's uh, that's it, man. Let's see. Maybe maybe Bisbing or, uh, or maybe GSP gets injured. I don't know. And I'll be ready to go for November. And uh, Bisbing won't be able to scatter away from, from a guy like me. So. <laughs> That could be yeah. that would be work out be nice for me. <laughs> that, would, that would be work. very New nice. York. I mean, Mad- Madison ready, Square Garden. That's right. That would be great. Yeah. You know, the funny the funny thing is about going up to 205 is that even in 205, John Jones is currently, it looks like, and the UFC kind of looks like they might be doing this, putting this together, but it looks like he may be facing Brock Lesnar at some point next year. So it looks like yeah, things so, are mean, tied up there as well. What's that? What, what it looks like things are tied up at 205 as well. I mean, what do you what are your thoughts on the fact that even at 205, if you go in there, looks like things would be delayed for a little bit as well? I don't know. I, like I said, I, I can't control any of these things. So, I mean, I'm not going to put, put any, push any any energy in it. I'm going to see how things play out. I'm going to worry about my hand, wait for that to heal up, and we'll see where we are uh, in a couple of weeks. You know. Would you be open if the UFC said, hey, Chris, your next fight, you can fight at 205? Would you be open to maybe the next fight being at 205? If, if there's a, a clear picture and a, a clear picture to the title, yeah. 
Well, it's, it's exciting stuff. Excited to see what happens next. Now, we know you've obviously got a great team with Ray Longo, Matt Serra, and John Vellante and the gang. So tell us, at the moment, are you guys, what's, what's the situation in the gym? Are, are you guys interested in this McGregor uh, Mayweather fight coming up, the boxing match? It's coming up next week. Are you guys excited to watch this thing? Or are you guys of the sentiment that, you know, this is a bit of a silly matchup? You know, everyone, I think, thinks it's a silly matchup, but I think everybody's interested. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm excited to watch it, to be honest with you, uh, because you never know what's going to happen. And there's so much on the line. It's, you know, uh, it's definitely a historic event. So I'm excited to watch it. What's What's the plans? Are you going to be watching it at home with the family, or, or are you, Longo and Sarah Volante, sort of having a bit of a party, get together and, and uh, watching the fights? I'm, uh, I, th- I have actually have, have an appearance, I believe, on uh, the Poconos. It's like in Pennsylvania. Oh, no. Have you ever been heard? Have you heard of Pennsylvania? I never know. We do, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, yeah. So you, okay. you'll, be, you'll be streaming but, it on yeah. your phone, right? Yeah, I'm going to stream it on my phone. I'm going to go on <laughs> Facebook and get like a fake, <laughs> one of those fake uh, streams. What's people the, are not paying for. What's, what's it, the appearance? It really is a problem, by the way. For one of these pay-per-views recently, I was on, I was on, just happened to be scrolling my news feed on Facebook and literally like seven people had like live Facebook live going with the UFC pay review going with thousands of people watching it. It was Matt and Sarah, I'm like, wasn't Holy it? Holy! <laughs> you know how much money? You know how much money these dudes is just taking? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess it's hard to stop. What? What was your question? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just curious. What is the appearance? What's What's going on in Pennsylvania? Oh, there's a there's. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a restaurant out there that one of my friends uh, knows uh, the owner, and they want to have me out there and watch the event. And, um, you know, probably sign autographs and all that stuff, but, you know, kind of just bring people to the bar. Well, what a, what a fun opportunity for Pennsylvania. I'm sure everybody's going to get up there. Before we let you go, Chris, I mean, you spoke in the past about Connor's size. Do you believe that he's got a chance here to beat Floyd? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually, I think I, I have him winning now. I think he's going to win. That's my last prediction, third round knockout. Wow, I'm just curious. What, what made you come to that conclusion? Because, I mean, a lot of people... Roll bouncing around, we're trying to figure it out. Obviously, he looks super uh, confident in all the media appearances. He's looking like he's in great shape. But what made you come to that conclusion, that final prediction? No, oh, I just got feeling. Just I'm feeling it. I think it's going to happen. And then they're going to have a second fight. Mayweather's going to win that. And then next thing you know, it they got they got Conor versus Floyd trilogy. Wow, there you go. Everybody and then maybe spent three hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> which means 500 million for each of them <laughs> and then maybe chris weidman uh, drops down weight and fights fights mayweather next <laughs> <laughs> i might have to take out mayweather name any of those boxes you give me that money let's go <laughs> you might need to you might need to do it chris because it looks like all the divisions are tied up in the ufc at the moment but look it's exciting and pennsylvania again get out there what's the name of your friend's restaurants so everybody in pennsylvania can make sure um, to get out the, there and the mountain creek the mountain creek inn well, there you go. The Man and Creek. And it sounds like the place to be in Pennsylvania during the Conor McGregor, uh, Floyd Mayweather <laughs> fight. Make sure be you there. get up there, get, get next to Chris, get his thoughts. He, he put out the official prediction. So if he gets it, you'll be there live to ce- celebrate it with him. I mean, it'll be a big, big thing. And guys, make sure to follow Chris on Twitter at Chris Weidman and Instagram Chris Weidman UFC. Chris, we hope you have a speedy recovery with your thumb. We hope you, that scar looks cool because chicks dig scars. And we can't wait to see what happens next, man. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on to Submission Radio. Awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.